When I was 21, attending university, I began to work part-time at a school visit adventure camp, only around 10 minutes from where I lived. I needed the money. My original supply was about to run out. It seemed I was the only one interested in this job. All my mates were working in places I found extremely boring, mostly in retail. To me, this seemed like a golden opportunity. So I began working. I worked on Thursdays from 2pm to 11pm. I had to work so late because a lot of the kids there would sneak out of their huts and try to pull pranks on us. So after the kids would go to bed, me and the other part-timers would be on guard duty, stopping the kids from doing this. The first night I wasn't aware enough, and I got pelted with a half-eaten ham sandwich. These kids were quick. When I checked around, all the tents were filled with sleeping kids. However, the second Thursday is when it started to get weird. I was leaning up against one of the huts, texting my girlfriend, when I heard a child scream from a hut a few down from where I was. I ran over, and one of the full-timers followed me closely. When we got in, one of the kids was crying, curled up in a fetal position, while the other kids were looking at him confused. I asked him what was wrong. What he said still gives me chills. He told me that he had woken up to see something crawling in the window. I looked over. There was nothing in sight, but the window was open a little. My heart leapt, but I remained calm. I told the kid it must have been a fox or some other kid pranking him. But it didn't calm him down, he just kept crying. He wouldn't stop, and eventually we had to get his dad to come pick him up. Next Thursday I had begun to forget about it. I was washing my hands in the bathroom, and then I heard not one, but a whole hut of kids scream and shout. I was the third worker to get there. All the kids were either crying or sitting silently, wide-eyed. What they told us was even worse than last week. They told us that something was actually in the tent. I nearly screamed myself, as I saw the window was wide open. Most of the kids in the tent were picked up by their parents. When I arrived at the camp the following Thursday, I was told that some local policemen were at the camp as well. Apparently, the same thing had been happening all week. Kids screaming and telling the workers that someone had tried to enter or had entered the hut. When 7 p.m. rolled around, I made sure to stay close to the policemen. I had also been informed that I should do regular rounds of the huts to see if I could catch this guy in the middle of entering. I wish I had just quit the first night it happened, because what happened next still keeps me up at night to this day. I had done the rounds of around four huts and was convinced that tonight might be the night that nothing happened. It was nearly the end of my shift. Maybe the guy had been scared off by the policeman. I quietly creaked open the door to the hut I was in and peered around. All the kids were quietly sleeping. Then I quickly glanced at the window and my heart sank. The window was cracked open and a hand was curled around the edge. The fingers weren't normal. They were too long and the nails that were at the tips were long and brown. The skin of the hand was light gray and it almost looked as if it were flaking off. The hand looked like the hand of someone who had been dead a long time. I watched, horrified, as a head began to appear. It was bald and the skin was gray. A pair of blank, pure white, lifeless eyes appeared before shooting back below the window as the thing caught sight of me. The hand remained curled around the window. I poked my head out the door and signified to a nearby officer. She poked her head in the door and audibly gasped. She whispered something into her radio and then I heard the sound of a guard dog approaching. I followed the officers around the hut just in time to see something enter the woods. They shouted that I should follow them in the pursuit as I knew the woods better than them. I reluctantly obliged. The three of us chased this thing through the woods and we could hear its footsteps just in front of us. I told them that we were close to a clearing so we might be able to see this thing. We reached the clearing and stopped. There was nothing there. Then we heard footsteps. They were coming from all directions. The dog whimpered and took off and we followed close behind him. We burst out from the woods, panting. I quit my job that same night 
All the kids were evacuated, and a huge police team did a sweep of the woods. Apparently, they found footprints all around the clearing, but that's just what I've heard. A few days later, I heard that the camp had shut down and moved to a different location. I think they bought a bit of a large park and set it up there. I began working in the same retail stores as a few of my mates. I'll never forget seeing that hand and those white, lifeless eyes. Today's no sleep story comes from username Sturby. New videos every week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And sweet dreams.